Out of a deep reverence for the living Lord of heaven and earth, will you please rise for the chiming of the hour and the presentation of the word. Good morning. The psalmist declares, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, welcome to this time of worship in person and also virtually this morning. What a joy it is to be gathered here this day as we celebrate with our children and their families in our 2021 virtual vacation Bible school theme, A Pocket Full of Parables. As we begin our celebration, I think you'll find there in your bulletins a list of those who were involved in making this year's virtual VBS a possibility. Uh, That list includes class and activity leaders, those youth and adults who helped with our in-person VBS fun day this past Friday, those who stuffed bags of supplies and assembled crafts, and those who utilized technology to make it all possible. And of course this day, a big, big shout out to the children to the children who participated and uh, their families, uh, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'm going to uh, ask all those who were present at Vacation Bible School and all those who were involved in any way with our virtual VBS and in person on Friday, will you please stand and let us recognize you because you have a passion for faith formation and truly it takes a village to raise our children. Thanks be to God. You can stand. Thank you. I've got a few uh, community joys and concerns to share with you. 
Certainly our uh, hearts and our uh, prayers go out to Kitty Mortera and her family at uh, the passing of her beloved husband, Ray. That was on Wednesday, June the 23rd. Uh, you need to know that there is a uh, service planned at Our Lady of Nazareth. That's this Tuesday. Before the service at 10 a.m. will be the visitation at Our Lady of Nazareth. And then at 11 o'clock following, there will be a funeral uh, mass. And Monsignor Patrick Golden will be presiding. And I will tell you, I am honored uh, to be asked and also to be welcomed uh, into that congregation to take a part in that service. I invite us all to uh, remember Kitty and her family at this time and to cling very, very closely to the promise of life resurrected in our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a rose this day, and uh, we acknowledged uh, not too long ago the birth of uh, Wes, uh, full name, Wesley Leo Johnson. Certainly this morning we bring that rose and we uh, celebrate the proud parents, Anne and Charlie Johnson, and Big Brother Camp. And also we rejoice again this day with Ruth and Bruce Johnson in the birth of uh, Wes and that new life that has come to uh, their family and ours. Um, this Lord's Day, too, uh, the chancel flowers that you see, uh, they are given by uh, Mark Overacker. Uh, and that is in celebration of his and Catherine's 34th wedding anniversary today. And that gets a big shout out and a big word of thanksgiving. Congratulations, Catherine and Mark. That's quite a milestone. Um, also this morning, uh, we are going to be blessed, I have no doubt. Uh, we welcome as our guest vocalist, Ashura Caparello. I hope I did justice to that. Um, uh, thank you so much for being here and for sharing uh, your vocal talents uh, uh, with us, but more importantly, to the glory of God. Thank you so much. Um, some announcements that I want to lift up. If you'll take out the announcements page that's in your bulletin, I'm just going to touch on these briefly. Uh, you'll see that the Vacation Bible School was in, uh, involved in a Good Samaritan project, and uh, we're uh, continuing to collect medical supplies for the rescue mission and also for the Presbyterian Community Center. And you may drop those uh, off uh, at the church. We'll be doing that uh, through July the 2nd. On the 4th, um, we will begin our Christmas uh, in uh, July. And part of that is also uh, going to be celebrated uh, with an old, what I'm calling an old-fashioned 4th of July picnic, except it's going to be indoors. Uh, here in our fellowship hall. You'll see, what, you'll see what's being uh, provided for that. Uh, it should be a great time for fun and good food and fellowship. And um, I hope you'll come, and let me encourage you to bring a friend or two and uh, make that a, a really joyful day to celebrate. Uh, you'll see also that we will be celebrating uh, the Lord's Supper on the 4th during our worship service. And again, you are encouraged, as is our custom, to bring a loaf of bread and that will go to uh, supply the pantry at the Presbyterian Community Center and serve uh, our neighbors uh, in need. I mentioned Christmas in July. There's a whole host of things happening. I'm not going to itemize all of those. I will say that uh, you're seeing partially what's been planned. There's more to be planned. Uh, our goal is, is to try to bring as many people on site and in person to gather in different ways around different events so that we can reconnect and re-engage uh, in meaningful ways. Um, you'll also want to know that during worship for the month of uh, July, uh, we will be uh, actually celebrating Christmas. Uh, we'll be singing some Christmas hymns. There'll be Christmas music. Uh, we'll also be lifting up the incarnation of our Lord. And so, uh, again, I would encourage your participation there. Do you see the note there about earth care inspiration? Uh, I hope that uh, one of those might appeal to you or both of those suggestions might appeal to you. And perhaps you're doing things on your own that we don't even know about. And we would love to hear uh, what you're doing. I will encourage you this morning or sometime during the week, if you haven't been up to see the community garden, it is absolutely beautiful. And we know that it's going to be meeting some significant needs in our area as well. And it's just right up, right up the hill here. Uh, beyond the uh, educational wing. Last but not least, our youth are going to be gathering after worship today. Uh, they have an opportunity for a pizza lunch and also a tie-dye party, and that's happening in our fellowship hall. 
now in celebration of God who sent his son to do many things, one of which is to give us a pocket full of parables as teachable moments for our ongoing Christian discipleship in celebration of this God who loves us in Christ and the Spirit. Let us offer now our praise and our devotion. you please rise now in body or spirit and join in our morning call to worship? Come, let us celebrate the forgiving, reconciling love of God. For once we were lost and felt so far away, now we have been found and welcomed home. God's love is lavished upon us forever. We rejoice at the news of forgiveness and hope. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love.
And the prodigal son said, I will get up and go back to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer fit to be called your child. Please make me one of your hired laborers. Let us return to our God and make our confession known. How easily we leave your side, Lord God, for places and things far away. We stray and grow weary. Help us to make the journey back home. Guide us to your welcoming arms. Forgive us for so quickly pointing out the faults in others, failing to recognize our own. Too often we are stubborn, turning inward, failing to seek reconciliation. Transform our hearts to let go, to move into the music and the dancing, for we are so easily lost in ourselves. Only you, our Father, can find us. Forgive us. Restore our hearts anew. Amen. Just as the prodigal son found newness in his father's forgiveness, so too have we found newness in God's mercy. Friends, I rejoice with you this day. Our sins have been forgiven. Praise be to God. Welcome to all of our children who are with us today, both in person and online. We had such a wonderful time in VBS this week, where, as Kyle shared, we studied the parables, the gifts of stories from Jesus, which teach us how to live. We learn to help others through the story of the Good Samaritan, we learn to keep our hearts open and rich and thirsty to receive God's word, like the sower whose seeds fell on good soil. And we learn to rejoice when something like sheep or even people are found and come home. And on Friday, we enjoyed a fun day. And we celebrated all the stories, the science, the music, the crafts, the action activities, the snacks, everything that we enjoyed during VBS. On Friday, I have to share that Bob Ford was a wonderful hurt man as we relived the story of the Good Samaritan, and the children were quick to put Band-Aids all over his wounds. They knew how to do that well. When we visited the garden, we saw a sower in the garden, and we wondered who that might be, Mark Overracker. <laughs> it took us a while to figure it out, and at one point, one of the children looked up and said, where did that man go? And he had disappeared, we did, and I didn't know where he had gone. <laughs> so, and then when we um, were hunting for lost sheep, there was a shepherd wandering around looking for those sheep, and do you know that one little boy walked up to the shepherd and said, I'll help you find your sheep. And then they all searched, to, and, and we actually lost one sheep. We couldn't find it. And everybody pitched in to find that one lost sheep, and we did find it. And then we had a wonderful time listening to music, eating snacks, and having a good time dancing to a welcome home party for the prodigal son. We also enjoyed a, an explosive science lab, as well as some wonderful music. 
So you're going to see a slideshow here in just a moment of some of the highlights from our fun day on Friday. And then Miss Mandy and Miss Elizabeth are going to invite the children forward to sing some songs with us from VBS, or one song from VBS. Enjoy.
our prayer of illumination. Send your spirit among us, O God, as we meditate on your love. Prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to embrace what we hear. And strengthen our will to follow your way. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us listen to the familiar parable, seeking to see where we find ourselves and what new lessons we might learn. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. The parable of the prodigal and his brother. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to, in the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I'm dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, I sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arm around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his workers, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came in and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the workers and asked, what is going on? He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and he refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young calf so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're anything like me, you just love a good story. 
I love love stories. I love historical fiction. It always makes me want to go back and read about what's the real part of the historical fiction. I love scary stories that keep me on the edge of my seat and make me scan the dark at night. And I like stories that leave me hanging the best. They seem to invite us to wonder and to ponder about what might have happened or what we would have done if we had been in that character's situation. I love to be left hanging so I can make all of those predictions of what move might the character have made. And when I was a kid, I loved the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Do y'all remember those? I think they still have them. And that's where you read along through the book, and then there are parts when, as a reader, you have to make a choice. You decide which way the main characters will go, and then that will determine what happens for the rest of the story. I was always amazed at how the author could do that and how the book would kind of, we would chase the characters through the pages. Good stories are just a part of who we are. And from the beginning of time in every culture, people have told stories. I think I began to love the art of storytelling from my grandmother, who told the most wonderful stories about her childhood. We never knew if she was, you know, embellishing or if it was all just as she said, but nonetheless, we lingered on every single word. And stories across every time and every culture have been used to explain things, to entertain, as she did with us, to connect, as she did with us, and to teach. Did you know that there is an international storytelling center? And that center says that today we still enjoy stories, listening to them, telling them as deeply as our ancestors did, for our lives are bound together with stories, the tales, perhaps ever so ordinary, that seem to catch us up in some obscure, almost magical way that help us to make sense of our world. Us humans, we connect with stories. And that International Storytelling Center has a festival that takes place in Jonesboro, Tennessee every year. This year it's in October and I would love to go and just listen. And you may be familiar with StoryCorps, the national project that believes everybody's story matters and every voice counts. I love listening to the StoryCorps stories on NPR every Friday morning. And through stories, we began to see, or we begin to see, that even though we may be very different from one another, our stories help us to also see what we share in common in the human story. Teachers also know the power of stories to teach. I'm always amazed in my course evaluations at Radford at how my students comment on how much they love learning from my stories of teaching in the classroom. And there is a learning theory that says that we learn by watching and listening but from more knowledgeable others. And stories are one way we can learn from one another. I can use your story to make better choices in my life or to make the same choice. Stories can even be used as therapy to connect and to help others see that they aren't alone. I know in my third grade classroom, anytime a child got glasses for the first time, we pulled out all the books that had stories about characters getting glasses. And I find, and I'm sure you do too, the stories in the Bible are simply amazing. They are simple enough that even the youngest child can connect and hear and understand them and even contemplate them. But they're also complex enough that we as adults can spend our entire lifetimes pondering them and trying to live out the lessons within them. And Jesus used the art of storytelling. And in doing so, he captured his audiences. He left them thinking and wondering and pondering the meanings 
even us today. And in VBS this week, we, as we've shared before, we immersed ourselves in four of the stories that Jesus told. And so today, I'm going to focus on one of those stories. You know which one. And you know it well. It's familiar. But it's one of those stories from Jesus that I think does us well to visit and revisit time and time again. Because it's a tough one. We know it as the prodigal son. Some scholars argue that it should be called the parable of the good father to emphasize the goodness of the actions of the father in the story. Other scholars argue that it should be called the parable of the prodigal sons, plural, because both sons have failed to use what they have been given in a wise and well way. And so in the spirit of VBS, I'd like to take a look at these three familiar stories in the char- or characters in the story today, and I invite you to ponder, who are you in this story? Where do you connect? Who do you want to be? And what might we learn by revisiting this story yet one more time? So let's start with that younger son, the one deemed prodigal who lavishly wasted his father's fortune. Perhaps we can all relate to him on some level because he fiercely wanted to be independent, to get out of town as far away from home as possible and be on his own. He got his fortune and went on his merry way and he enjoyed a fancy high life for a while, spending money left and right, doing we don't even know what. He was focused purely on his own gain and his own pleasure. But as the story goes, a famine hit the land, and because he had squandered all that he had, the younger son ended up working for others, feeding pigs, wishing he could have just a little bit of what the pigs were eating. And we may laugh, we did crafts with pigs during Bible school this week, and we may laugh a little bit about the pig pen stuff, but in the culture of the day, we've got to remember, this boy was an embarrassment to his father and his family. It was unclean to surround oneself with swine and Gentiles. This was all serious stuff. But then he comes to his senses His belly is hungry, but his heart is also heavy, and he realizes all he had back home with his father, and he's so sorry. And so from the younger son's experience, how do you relate? Where are we reminded that God has given us so much? We ask for a lot, too. Are we squandering it? And what will it take for us to realize and come to our senses in this light? Where have we been so focused on ourselves that we've overlooked how our actions might be affecting others, even those we love? And from this sun, perhaps we also can see a picture of repentance, a turning around, which takes a lot of courage to walk back home. And as he rehearses his words, his words pleading for forgiveness, his father sees him from afar. I can't help but wonder how many times that father had looked down that road, wondering where his son was, what he was doing, if he was even still alive, I wonder how often he looked down that road longing to see his son returning home. And so when he sees his son, the younger son doesn't even have a chance to get it all out. His father welcomes him full on, open arms, 
pulls out the finest robe that they have, a ring, and puts sandals on his feet and orders his workers to begin to prepare a party with a fatted calf. In this father, we're reminded God never leaves us. God never gives up on us. God's arms are always welcoming us home, even when we have gone astray on our own accord. There is nothing so bad that God would leave us, forget about us, and turn God's back on us. And with the robe and the ring and the calf and the sandals, we see that even though we mess up royally, God gives us the best that life has to offer. God doesn't give us the leftovers we deserve so often. The bounty of God's kingdom is open for us all. And there is joy there. And while we typically see the Father in this story as a portrait of God, open arms, welcoming us home, perhaps we could look at the Father in a different way as well. How do we greet those who have hurt us, who have disappointed us, shamed us? Do we do so with open arms? Do we offer our best, and do we want the best for those who haven't earned it or even deserve it? Where do we recognize, initiate, and celebrate with joy when those who around us have been lost and are now found? So we have the younger son, the father, and then there's that older brother who, by birthright, would receive two-thirds of his father's estate, regardless of his brother's actions. This older brother is coming in from the plow fields, hears the festivities in the distance, can't figure out what's going on. He hears music, rejoicing. And when he finds out why, he's bothered. And he is irritated he kind of reminds me of my kindergartners from many years ago. They have a keen sense of what's fair, and they're not afraid to call it out. Ask any kid about fair, and they do understand it. This boy, this older son, knows fair. And even though his body has stayed at home, perhaps his spirit, too has been off in a distant land. And in doing so, he too is prodigal, wasting the promise of what the Father has in store for him as well. Some scholars say, think that this elder son represents the religious authorities of the day, self-righteous and quick to point fingers. Others See the elder son as the church today. Those who are good, who follow the rules, but also point fingers. Those who might shake their heads at the church's embrace of people that have always been disapproved of. One author states that this older son is the best of us at our very worst. Perhaps we've been there with this elder son, pointing out the unfair of what she gets or he gets, but not me. And it bugs us. A friend of mine recently shared a story with me that I'd like to share with you today, speaking of stories. And it goes like this. There's a tale of two monks traveling together, walking down a road. They arrive at a muddy, shallow river and find a well-dressed woman who rudely says to them, Don't just stand there. Help carry me across this messy river. Without thinking twice, the older monk lifts her up in his arms and carries her across. She says nothing, not even thanking him. The two monks walk the remainder of the day, and the whole time the younger one keeps thinking to himself, how could he have picked her up? 
we're not supposed to touch women or even talk to them. And she was so impolite and so unkind. Later that evening, arriving at the inn for dinner, the younger monk can take it no longer. He can't contain himself, and he bursts out. What were you thinking? He asks his friend. She was nasty, and you broke the rules, and she didn't even say thank you. The older monk gently replied, I put that woman down hours ago after we crossed the river. Why are you continuing to carry her? It seems that the elder son is still carrying the weight of his little brother's sins. He can hear the music in the distance, but he's not willing to let that burden down. He can't find room to rejoice. He's bitter. And it makes me wonder, what am I holding on to? What are you holding on to that keeps us from entering into the joy of God's blessings? Where are we bullying up, as my father used to call it, and refusing to welcome others in, despite their shortcomings? What this older brother can't see is that the father's love for his brother doesn't erase the father's love for him. Both sons are invited to the party. God's love is not an either or, it's a both and. So I wonder today, where are you in the story? Who are you? Are you the younger son who's maybe messed up, squandered some blessings, or taking relationships for granted? Are you the younger brother who seeks forgiveness and grace? And if you are, I encourage you to start walking home. God is watching and God is waiting with open, welcoming arms. Are you the father looking down the road, waiting on someone who's lost? Don't give up. Are you willing to overlook the hurts, the shame, the disappointments? opting to celebrate of relationships renewed? Or are you that elder brother who has followed all the rules and done everything right, but who so easily keeps comparing what he gets and what he has done with others? Are you this brother continuing to carry a burden that has already been lifted in Jesus Christ? Are you this brother who leaves us hanging, we don't know what he ultimately chooses. So here we are at this point in the Choose Your Own Adventure, the part where we get to write the brother's story as a part of our own. Will we stay with the pigs or go home? Will we wait and receive others with joy? Will we go into the party or will we carry the weight and refuse to rejoice? Will you make this a story of joy and reconciliation as it's meant to be? It can be difficult to accept that God's grace extends to all, even those with questionable conduct and character, but God's grace does extend to all. And so with this in mind, do you hear the music? Will you go in? How will you write the end of this story?
Amen. <laughs> what a wonderful thing it is that our God is a forgiving God who receives us with open arms as beloved children returning home. Let us now meditate upon our blessings, and may our offerings today be used to support those who are, need, are in need of love, grace, mercy, and reconciliation. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, you take us at our best and our worst and everywhere else in between and love us just the same. Like a waiting parent, you yearn for us to return home to you when we wander away. As God of the faithful and of prodigals, your steadfast love and tender mercy mark the journeys we walk every day. Thank you, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and sustainer for your compassionate heart, for your rejoicing over us, for your loving us and all the other peoples of the world in the hopes that we will honor and serve you with a tireless, faithful passion to seek your truth, to pursue your justice, to work for your peace, and to show the mercy you show us to every other living thing. Holy God, we unite with one voice in prayer for your world, its leaders, and its many challenges and ever-expanding possibilities. 
As part of your church universal, keep us attentive to the teaching of your parables. For though they are ancient texts, they remain instructive for us in the living of these days. and flow between joy and sorrow, wellness and suffering, fulfillment and disappointment, faith and doubt, calm and stress, and everything else in between. Help us to be mindful of you in all the moments we live. Center us and direct us to pray and work without ceasing to comfort the brokenhearted, to live each day with honesty and integrity, to stand with family and friends who grieve the passing of loved ones, and in every circumstance to be humble before you and kind toward our neighbors. Hear our prayers, O God, and make us instruments of your peace, mercy, and justice as we work for the reconciliation of the world. In the name of Christ, who shows us how to live and how to die well, and who teaches us to pray as one, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You've probably heard me speak many times of an app that I have on my phone called D365 that gives a daily devotional. Well, one writer in that app a few weeks ago reminded us that God's grace offers us blank pages, and God's grace invites us to continue to write our part in God's story. So keep writing knowing we serve a faithful, loving God who extends open arms and who has the power to weave our story into God's good plan for the reconciliation of the world. So go, have courage, and rejoice in the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.